Amen. 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 You may be seated. Uh, speaking from the subject today, uh, his way is perfect. Last Sunday we talked about his word being perfect. Today we're talking about his way is being perfect. Amen. Uh, Beloved, we are living right now, you and I, we are experiencing uh, the age of technology hmm? and social media. Many people uh, are searching social media and technology, trying to find ways to be perfect. Can I work in here? Mm -hmm. There are so many uh, dissatisfied people in the world today, and many of them are trying to find a way to be perfect. Uh, you were born a certain way, and you're not pleased with the way that you were born, so you want to fix things. Mm -hmm. Huh? Because you want to look perfect. Hmm? And you want to be able to act perfect. Amen. The search would be fine if we lived in a perfect world. Can I get a witness in here? But my beloved, we don't live in a perfect world. This is a messy world. Amen. We live in a fallen world. Uh, since the days of the first man and woman, that God made, we have been living in an imperfect and sinful and fallen world. Amen. Uh, most people are searching for better ways of doing everything. Hmm? Uh, I, read, uh, I read an article a few weeks ago about a lady that was traveling on a trip. And she had ways on her phone. <clears throat> hmm? Yeah. And she followed ways. She did what ways told her to do. And she ended up going down a dead end street. And the car fell in a ditch because there was no road ahead of her. Can I get a witness in here? Uh, so we, we, we try to find better ways of doing everything. You used to have a cast iron skillet, but now you got an air fryer. I'm trying to help you. A better way to do everything. It is because of the advancements in technology uh, that ways are being found uh, to do some of the things in life in a better way. If it's not broken, somebody said, don't fix it. Well, that's fine, but you can improve it. Mm -hmm. huh? uh, so, and so we're looking for ways to do things better. Now, better ways are not necessarily perfect. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, when we often discover better ways of doing things, usually it leads to additional problems in other areas of life. A better way to do this, but you cause a problem over there. That's right. Huh? And so uh, now we have boats, trains, and planes so that we can travel farther, we can travel faster, but there's a cost involved. Hmm? Uh, in society today, uh, everybody's trying to push EVs down everybody's throat. Huh? Electronic like heat. I'm not about to sit on that many batteries yet. <laughs> now, that's me. Now, now you can go ahead and be moderate. I'm not about to sit on that many batteries going 90 miles an hour anywhere. Not gonna happen. The technology is not there yet. Amen. And if you're taking a decent trip, you still got to stop and plug in somewhere. Time is money. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, we can travel fast, but there's a cost involved. Now, the cost can be, uh, uh, can cause a, a problem in our overall health. The cost can cause a financial problem. Huh? Our text today uh, is a song of David. 
Last week we talked about Moses' song. Everybody sing it. Before they start rapping, they start singing. <laughs> so David here, uh, this is David's song. And if you read the uh, 20, uh, the whole 22nd chapter, you will be able to uh, hear and read and understand all of David's song. Amen. He sang this song because he was a musician and a singer. Uh, but he sang this song near the end of his life when God had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies. You do know God can fix it, so he'll deliver you from uh, out of the hands of all of your enemies, don't you? Amen. And you don't have to die for that to happen. Uh, so he had delivered him out of the hand of all of his enemies and out of the hand of Saul, who was the people's king. Mm -hmm. David uh, was at a point in his life where he was at peace with God. Anybody in here, you still arguing with God? You need to stop that. You need to go find peace with God. And his name is peace, so you won't have too much of a problem. Huh? But there are a lot of people, God can't bless them because they're not at peace with him. So David here was at peace with God, and then he was at peace with himself. Now, let me help somebody this morning. The worst war in the world that you can have and that I can have is with self. Yeah. When you learn how to be at peace with self, when you learn how to stop fighting self, huh? God will open up a lot of blessings for you. So you have to be at peace with God and be, then be at peace with yourself. Amen. And then as much as possible, try to be at peace with all of your so-called enemies. Because many times your so-called enemies, they're enemies of God, but you don't know it. That's why we try to fight everybody. Huh? David was able to look back over his life and he was able to, he said he was able to see the goodness the mercy and the grace of God. You ever look back over your life and saw God's grace? All right. Sometimes you can't see it till you look back. All right. huh? You ever look back over your life and, 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 and saw God's goodness? Yeah. Huh? When you got what you did, you, you got what you know you didn't deserve, huh? But God was good to you. Yeah. Huh? Have you, have you. Have you ever looked back over your life and saw nothing but God's grace? Yeah. It didn't have nothing to do with your intellect. It didn't have anything to do with who you thought you were mm. and how many friends you thought you had, but it was God's grace. Yeah. Huh? You, you ever did that? Just sometimes it's good to look back over your life and see how good God has been to you in spite of how bad you've been to him. <laughs> Let me work with you. Mm. So the people had chosen Saul to be their king because they wanted somebody tall, dark, and handsome. Mm -hmm. Don't you know that to get you in trouble? Mm. Huh? Tall, dark, and handsome will get you in trouble every day of the week. What got Eve in trouble in the garden was a walking snake. <laughs> let, me, let me fix it up for you. A pretty walking snake. Huh? That's what got her in trouble. Huh? Okay, I'm going to leave you alone. Uh, so they chose Saul, but God chose them. You don't hear me yet, do you? Uh, and because God chose David to be the king, Saul hated him and went about to try to kill him. Mm -hmm. But God kept David and protected David. Saul got so bad until Saul went to some witch doctors, <laughs> some soothsayers, yeah. some readers, if you will. Yeah. Huh? To, to try to get them to discern the future. <laughs> and, and, and my ladies and gentlemen, that was the end of his kingdom. Mm -hmm. God said, thou shalt have no other God before me. If he wanted to know something, he should have went and asked God. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And so uh, the Lord took care of that, Psalm 17 and, and 7. 
God did not keep and protect Saul because his name, uh, brother, he didn't protect and keep David because his name was David. So we get hung up on names too, you know. Uh, but he, that's not why he kept him, amen? Uh, David, my brothers and sisters, was a sinner just like me and you. All right. Let me show you his record. I got his record right here. <laughs> Some people think that just because the courthouse closed, you know, that they can't get your record. But David had a record, amen? And, and David's record, first of all, he was an adulterer. Yeah. Huh? Not only that, but David was a murderer. Yeah. Huh? Uh, he, he had bloody hands. That's why he couldn't build an order temple. Mm -hmm. And then David also, watch this right here. David had a dysfunctional family. Can I preach in here? As a matter of fact, uh, one of his sons tried to take him out. Yeah, yeah. But God fixed that too. Mm -hmm. See, when you're going to do mischief, mm -hmm. his son was, was after him to kill him, mm -hmm. but his son had long hair. Yeah, yeah. Huh? He riding on a horse and the hair got caught up in a tree branch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and God broke his neck. Yeah. I'm gonna leave you alone. All right. Hmm? Uh, so, so, so first of all, that's a, it was a battle between father and son. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, dysfunctional. He had a dysfunctional family. Uh, David was the son of Jesse. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, he became a king, uh, but he was also a musician. Hmm? Uh, and the Bible said he played skillfully for God, amen, and, and David had a reputation. Hello, somebody. You know when you're a good musician, you get a reputation. Uh, David had a reputation. David was a bad boy. Uh, this is what they said about David. Uh, David had a name. Everybody knew him as David, you know, but, but, but from his musicianship, uh, they called David the sweet psalmist of Israel. That means he was a bad boy. <laughs> oh, yeah, he, he could work, amen? Uh, 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 so, but David was born just like me and you. He was born in sin. He was shaped in iniquity, amen? Uh, in all David's sins, watch this right here, because this is what we do today. In all of his sins, and I didn't name all of them, this is what he did. He delayed his duty to God. You got some folks out there in the street. Huh? Yeah, you, you got some kin folks and some folks you know out there in the street. You can't get them in the church. This, this, this is what they're doing right here. They're delaying their duty to God. Uh -huh. Can I work in here? So in all his mess, and, and he wasn't in it by himself, because the woman that he saw taking a man, that she was the name, wasn't it? Yeah. Please tell me, why in the world would you go outside naked and take a bath? <laughs> Don't you know somebody won't see you? <laughs> she knew where David lived. Jesus. She knew how high his window was from where she was. Come on here. Come on back in here. He was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Now, uh, but David's sins, all of his sins, all his mess, delayed his duty to God. Do you hear me, somebody? No. David was destined to be king. A whole lot of us don't know what our destiny is yet. We dibble it in dabbling. Just dibble it in dabbling. And when you dibble and dabble all the time, you are delaying your duty to God. Somebody else and something else is claiming all of your attention. So David was destined to be the king of Israel, but he delayed his duty by all of his sins that he had committed. God allows all things to happen in our life for our learning. Have you ever repeated the same old thing over and over? And you never got to the real meaning or the real issue. Can I help somebody? God allows all of the things in our life to happen for our learning. Some of us are slow learners. Mm. All right. I hear people talking about the short bus. 
Some folks live their whole life on the short bus. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? Because those things happen, they happen for our learning. And then we start scratching. I don't know why in the hell all this keeps happening to me. Yeah. Well, it's happening for your learning, but you don't never learn. <laughs> hmm? And so he was destined to be uh, the king of Israel, but he delayed his duty. Amen. David learned uh, what caused his sins in his life. But he did not allow those sins, watch this somebody, to crush him. A whole lot of us, we allow our sins to take us out. That thing that you can't control, that's, that's just taking you over, you allow it to crush you. There's some folks that look at you and tell that you used to do this. And you used to do that. You remember when you were that? And we will allow those sins to crush us. But David didn't allow those sins to crush him and to prevent him from being what the Bible says, a man after God's own yeah. heart. So I'm trying to tell you, you can't overcome. That's what I'm getting at. Amen? Now, so God, he, watch this right here. Whatever God wants to deal with me and you, he will do exactly what he did with David. David was ran back. He was living good. God sent a preacher. Check your Bible. Yeah. God sent a preacher to tell David about his sins. Yeah. And that's why so many folks hate the preacher. Mm -hmm. Well, can I tell you that the preacher's job, yes, he's a preacher, wonderful, flowery, uh, intelligent, feel good sermons, but he's also talking about sins. Yeah. The preacher told David about his sins. Uh -huh. David, when, when the preacher told him about it, David did what every same person ought to do when the Holy Spirit convicts you. The Bible said David repented of his sins, yeah. watch this, and cried out to God to do what? Have mercy on me hmm? according to your loving kindness and according to the multitude of your tender mercy. That's what David did. Yeah. He didn't get on the telephone. Mm. He didn't get on TikTok. Mm -hmm. He didn't get on Snapchat. He didn't get on Facebook. Yeah. Hello, somebody. He cried out to the one that could help him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He didn't cry out to an influencer. <laughs> <laughs> but he cried out to God, and he said to God, uh, and I want you to blot out, watch this, all of my transgressions. Yeah. Yeah. You ought to give it all to God. Mm -hmm. He can fix all of it. We like, to, we like to cut stuff up and get it done. Well, Lord, I want you to take this right here and I don't want to do it because you're going to I can't do this. <laughs> He'll let you do that. But you'll make a mess. Yeah. David, watch, let's look at what David said. David told God, said, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Hmm? Now, that word iniquity means from my crookedness. All right. Help me if you pull this train by myself. Listen. Do you not know that it's very possible that you could be sitting next to a crook this morning in church? Here's what he said. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities. And iniquity means your crookedness. Mm -hmm. I see them two every brother looking at each other. <laughs> One of them said, you crooked. The other said, you crooked too. <laughs> Well, I got news for you. Everybody in the house is crooked this morning. Yeah, so you sit next to a crook. Amen. So watch this right here. David, David said, wash me from my iniquities, and then you what? Cleanse me from my sin. Yeah. There's only one thing that can clean us up from our sin. That's the blood of Jesus. Amen. Cleanse me from my sins. David confessed his trans transgressions and said that his sins were ever before. That's how you got to deal with self. See, you got to be honest with yourself. I don't care nothing about what folks say about you. I tell people all the time, you can't stop folks from talking, you can get something to talk about. All right. That's right. That's right. But when it comes to my sin and your sin, they're ever before you. Amen. Let me help somebody this morning. You can, you got a big house, you can run upstairs. When you run up there, your sin is going to run right up there with you. Yeah. Huh? You got a den in the bed, run on down in the den. Yeah. Your sin is going to run down there with you. Amen? Yeah. Uh, so you've got to deal uh, with your own sins, amen? Uh, he said, my sins are ever before me, amen? And our sins, watch this right here. My sins and your sins should trouble you. Don't get so comfortable. 
Anybody ever heard this saying, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted? Where do you see that at? At just about every funeral you ever know. God wasn't talking nothing about a funeral. He wasn't saying nothing about a funeral, uh, Matthew 5 and 4. What he was talking about is me and you mourning for our sins. Mm. Blessed are they that mourn, blessed are they that their sins are ever before them and they mourn because of them. Mm. That's what he was talking about. Mm. We turn into a funeral. <laughs> Cover up. Amen? So then this is what David said. David said, I acknowledge that I have sinned against God. Hmm? And, I, and it is against God alone that I have done all these evil deeds uh, that were done in God's eyesight. Don't you know uh, whatever sin you commit that God is looking? You're not supposed to be in houses now. Well, I want this room here. I want this room so dark that I can feel the darkness. Don't you know God in there? <laughs> The Bible said the light shines into the darkness, and the darkness comprehends it not. Yeah. You can't run from God. Amen. And so David, David was saying here, every sin that I've committed has been in God's eyesight. You've got to know that. You've got to go ducking and dodging. And you know what? You know what's so funny? Can I tell you something that's funny? One of the funniest things in the world is to see church folks trying to hide from the priest. You ain't hiding. <laughs> you ain't hiding. Look. They want you to hurry up. They, some folks, they want you to hurry up and leave so they can get loose. Just go and get loose. All right. I, I already know you get loose. Right. I can look at you. I can look at you and tell you get loose. Right. Just go and get loose, you know. But they try to hide from the preacher. They get the whispering and going on, you know. Mm. You ain't hide nothing. Mm. Quiet is kept the preacher probably can do what you do better than you can. <laughs> Let me get out of here. All right. <laughs> So this is David said, everything I did, I did in your eyesight. Watch this. Uh, David said that God knew every sin that he had committed, and he acknowledged that God had a right. That's another thing you got to do when you deal with sin. That God had a right to judge him in any way he pleased. If I'm wrong, God can judge me any way he wanted to judge me. I can't tell God how to judge me. God said that David desires truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part, God would make him to know wisdom. Amen. Uh, David asked God to purge him with hyssop, and then he would be clean. When you want to get right with God, they used to sing a song in the church, get right with God and do it now. Yeah. Amen. When you want to get right with God, then you've got to go to God with all of your baggage. Amen. And then what God will do is he will take your sins, he will deal with you about your sins, and then he will give you wisdom and knowledge to show you how to handle life. Are you here this morning? Uh, then David asked God to wash him, and then he would be whiter than snow. The only thing that can make you whiter than snow still is the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, only the blood can make us white as snow. David asked God to make him uh, to be able to hear joy and gladness so that his bones, which God had broken, would be able to rejoice. The reason some folks do not have the joy of the Lord, hmm? they can be sitting up in church and do not have the joy, is because of their sin. Sin will break your bones. You can be walking around looking just as normal as everybody else, and you'd be tore up on the inside. And don't have not one iota of joy. Do you hear me, somebody? Now that's a miserable condition right there. He said, he asked God, make me to be able to hear joy. He didn't say have joy, he said hear it. Hmm? And then gladness, so that my bones, which God had broken, would be able to rejoice. The reason some folks say rejoice, God can broke your bones. Matter of fact, let me say it another way, you broke down. Mm -hmm. uh, and don't know you broke down. See, some folks when they broke down, oh my God, they just walk so erect and straight, they just broke all the way down. <laughs> it's just like somebody telling the emperor he naked. Mm -hmm. Okay. He wanted to be a rejoice. The reason many people do not have the joy of the Lord and cannot rejoice is that they have not acknowledged and dealt with the sins in their life. Amen. 
They've not mourned over their sin. Blessed are they that mourn and they shall be comforted. Amen? Yeah. David has got to uh, hide not his face from his sins hmm? and blot out all of his iniquities. He has got to create in him, that's what we say, create in me a clean heart yeah. and renew a right spirit within me. Don't you know that you cannot communicate with God with a foul spirit? You can come down to this altar, get on your knees, mourn, snot, and do everything else you want to do. But if you got a toe up, broke up spirit, you can't communicate with God. If you have a dead spirit, you can't communicate with God. And don't try to make God do nothing. Because first of all, watch this, I'm trying to make it plain for you. The reason that you have to have a right spirit is because God is a spirit. Yeah. So if I'm going to communicate with God, I need to do so by way of the spirit. Yeah. He don't care nothing about your voice. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Lord, I'm a great orator. Mm -hmm. That's your problem. <laughs> a broken heart and a contrite spirit is what God requires. Let me get out of here. Uh, David asked God to cast not him away from his presence. Let me help somebody. You're in a bad situation when God casts you away from his presence now. Oh, you're in a bad situation right there. David said, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit away from me. And he also asked him to restore unto me the joy of my salvation. You saved and you don't have any joy. You saved and every time somebody look at you, you sigh on my Talk to me, somebody. Yeah. You, you say it, but you can't speak. Mm -hmm. hmm? You don't hear what I'm trying to tell you, do you? Huh? You sit up in church, church full of folks, you sit up on an island. You don't want to shake nobody's hand. You don't want to look to the right and to the left. You don't want to be bothered. Why in the world are you here? Yeah. Do you hear me, somebody? Yeah. Huh? You've lost the joy of your salvation. Amen. And he asked him to uphold me. That's what David has said. Uphold me with your free Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Spirit has to have preeminence in my life and in your life, and the Spirit has to have preeminence in God's church. That's why when the church, when the church catch on fire, mm -hmm. I know my place. I try to get in the fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I try to feel some of the heat, if you please. Yeah. Amen. And David, like so many of us. Uh, must grow or had to grow to the point where he could stop reciting the 23rd Psalm. Mm -hmm. Got a whole lot of folks just re they, they can recite that. Oh Lord, please don't let it be a home going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you walk to somebody and say, What is your favorite uh, verse of scripture? They jump to the 23rd Psalm. Yeah. Well, you've got to learn how to stop reciting the 23rd Psalm and move on to believing it. Yeah. Huh? Uh, and, and you believe it by faith. Amen. David knew and believed uh, that the Lord was his shepherd and that he shall not want. Amen? When the Lord is truly your shepherd, you shall not want because the ways of the Lord are always perfect. His ways. You might not always agree with them, but they're always perfect. They're always perfect. Amen? Not only that, uh, the perfect way of God, watch this, is past man's understanding. That's why so many folks mad at God. That's why so many folks argue with God. God's ways are past man's finding out. Amen? Uh, but they're perfect. Uh, the perfect ways of the Lord are beyond man's finding out because they are always perfect and humanity is not perfect. We live in a sinful world. Now, there are some perfect ways of God that we're only going to understand when the morning comes. When all of God's children We'll have gathered home. And they say the song, we'll understand it better. Right and right. But down here, you're not going to understand it. There's some things about God, some ways of God, you're only going to understand when you get to heaven. That's why uh, heaven is my home, and I, I can't wait to get to heaven because I have some questions that I want to ask God. I have some questions that I would like for him to explain uh, to me. I'd like to hear his version. Amen? I've had to suffer. Uh, because of things I did not understand. But when I get home, I'll be able to ask God some questions. Amen? And uh, so we'll understand it by by now. Uh, God's ways are always right because he's righteous. I didn't say self-righteous. I said righteous. His ways are higher 
and much better than our ways will ever be. I don't care nothing about your bright idea. God's ways are always perfect. Amen. His ways are stable and his ways are enduring. Amen. That's why when you start out with God, thank you, Holy Ghost, you ought to stay with it. Mm. Got a whole lot of folks that change God's in the middle of the stream. Mm. Uh, start out with God, everything going all right, and then uh, all of a sudden the clouds come and it start raining, and you jump and get you a new God. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then you got to stay with that because you shame. Mm. You got to keep on getting wet. Mm. You got to keep on going in and out of storms <laughs> because you shame. Amen. But you ought to stay with God once you start out with him, amen? So his ways are, are perfect, amen? Uh, his ways are just, his ways are fair, his ways are true, amen? And then God's ways are so perfect until he fixed it. Hmm? So that there's only one way for you and me to get home. And by the way, hell is not your home. God never created hell. He didn't create hell for people. But hell is going to be full of folks. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, his way is so perfect until uh, he fixed it so there was only one way that you and I could become a child of God. Uh, we must be born again. That's the only way. I don't care how much money you got, you still can't buy salvation. Amen. Yeah. I, I don't care how tall you are, you still cannot encompass salvation. There's only one way that you can be saved, and that is you must be born again. He told Nicodemus, Jesus was a night, Nicodemus night school teacher, he said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Yeah. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee that you must be born again. It's a one-way trip. And then another thing, uh, Christ must be received. Mm. Hmm? The only way that you and I can have Christ as Lord and Savior, we have to receive him. Yeah. Well, Pastor, how do, you, how do I receive him? Not in your head, but in your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Are you hearing me, somebody? Mm -hmm. He came unto his own. And his own received him not. But to many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Yeah. The, way, the only way that you can become a son or a daughter, you've got to receive him in your heart. And the reason your head won't do is because your head is safe playground. Mm. He'll jump in and scramble things. Mm. Amen. Uh, and, and there's only one way to God, the creator and the sustainer and the heavenly father. And that way is through his only begotten son. That's the one way. Yeah. The scripture said that Jesus himself had to be obedient to the word. Huh? He also had to be obedient to the ways of God. Don't you remember uh, that Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and how he kneeled down and began to pray to the Father and he prayed so hard until sweat started dripping down off him just like blood. And his prayer was, Father, is there any other way? Is there any other way that uh, I can let this cup pass? But if not, then uh, so be your word. Amen? God had a way. Jesus had to drink from the bitter cup. Yeah. Amen. On his way to Calvary, mm -hmm. when he picked up the cup, mm -hmm. when he looked down in the cup, he saw the sins of the whole world swimming around in the cup. Mm. He saw all of the snakes, and he saw all of the nastiness, and he saw all, he saw all of the degradation down in the cup. Amen. And when he looked down in the cup, he prayed, and that's the Lord is it in other words. Can we do anything else? And the Lord let him know that he had to drink of the bitter cup. I'm so glad today that he drank of the bitter cup. Yeah. I'm so glad that uh, he, he was able to die for my sins and for yeah. your sins. Yeah. And so the Bible said there was only one way uh, back to God. Not only that, but when you look at Jesus when he left heaven, I'm done. The only way that he could save humanity is he had to stand up in heaven and change clothes. Yeah. He was too glorified. He was too holy to come down uh, in his glorified state. He had to stand up in heaven and change clothes. Take off glory. Put on humanity. Mm -hmm. And then come all the way down to a little ghetto town called Bethlehem. 
Be born in a manger. Wrapped up in swaddling clothes. Uh, matter of fact, his mother had to be a virgin that have, had never known a man. You don't hear me yet, do you? Uh, the Holy Ghost had to, was this special from heaven. And I just want you to just go, God told the Holy Ghost, I just want you to go and just overshadow her. Yeah. While she's conceived yeah. by the Holy Ghost. Do you hear me, somebody? I wish I could tell you like I want to tell you because uh, some folks think they're grown. Mm -hmm. uh, but they ain't really grown. Oh, yeah. They perpetrated, amen? Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit had to overshadow her as she had to be conceived of, he had to be conceived of the Holy Spirit, amen? And then he had to be tempted of Satan. Mm -hmm. You don't hear me yet, do you? And the, 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 the rest of it, the rest of the story is that uh, he had to be arrested one Friday. Mm -hmm. It could not have been Thursday mm -hmm. because it wasn't God's way for Thursday. Yeah. Do you hear me, somebody? Uh, he had to be arrested coming out of a garden on Friday. And uh, you know the story. He had to be tried in six different courts by six different unjust judges. Yeah. That was God's perfect way. Yeah. Not only that, but you know the rest of the story, how he had to march up down out the sea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the heat mm -hmm. of the day. Oh. Blood running from everywhere. Got about halfway up there, God he fell down on one knee. Yeah. God had a way, God had a man in the crowd that had to run out. Had a black man mm -hmm. in the crowd that had to run out and help Jesus bear the cross. And then somebody picked up their pen and said, Must Jesus yeah. bear the cross alone and all the world go free? Yeah. I stopped by to tell you this morning that there's a cross for you. Yeah. And there is a cross for me. Yeah. You know what happened? On top of their mother's hill, they put nails in his hand and spikes in his feet and speared him in his side and put a thorn of crowns on his head. Blood started running down. But he never said a moment word. Yeah. Because it was God's perfect way. And the Bible said that he hung down from the sixth to the ninth hour. He didn't hang any longer than that. He didn't hang any less time than that. Yeah. That's how long it took to reconcile my sins and your sins back to God. From the sixth hour to the ninth hour. And then Jesus dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said he gave up the ghost. Yeah. Uh, no, they didn't kill him. Uh, he gave up the ghost. He said, I got power yeah. huh? to lay my life down. And then I got power to pick it back up again. Yeah. You know the rest of the story, don't you? Uh, the record he is that he died. And I've never been so glad in all of my life uh, that a man died. Usually when folk die, folks start crying. Mm. <laughs> but because I know that Jesus died for me, I'm glad. Yeah. Because I have a right to the tree of life. Yeah. The Bible said that he died and they took him down and laid him in Joseph's new tomb. Matter of fact, the Bible said a new borrow or two. And any time you lay down in a borrow or two, mm. that's not your tomb. That means you just read it for a little while. I don't know whether they got it from Red Sun or wherever they got it from, but it was a bar from two. Yeah. <laughs> the Bible said three days and three nights. <laughs> but early on the third day, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. according to the scriptures, yeah. yes. <laughs> he got up with all power yeah. <laughs> in heaven and earth in his hand. And the reason that he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand is because it was God's perfect way. Peter picked up a pen and said, there is no other name yeah. under heaven and earth whereby men and women, boys and girls can be saved. Yeah. But by the name of Jesus, it is by the name of Jesus that we are here today. It is by the name of Jesus that when we pray, God will hear our faintest cry. That's why the word said, whenever you pray, whenever you ask, ask it 
in Jesus' name. Yeah. <laughs> because that's God's way. <laughs> if you ask in Buddha's name, <laughs> ain't nothing gonna happen. All right. <laughs> if you ask in the Pope's name, <laughs> there's nothing <laughs> that's gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> if you ask it in Confucius' name, <laughs> there's nothing <laughs> that's going to happen. <laughs> but when you ask it in Jesus' name, <laughs> when you call Jesus' name, <laughs> all of the angels <laughs> come to attention. <laughs> when you call Jesus' name, yeah. Yeah. the Bible said that Satan, <laughs> Satan know Jesus' name. <laughs> but when you call Jesus' name, <laughs> that, 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 that all of the demons, <laughs> they just start trembling. <laughs> and so if you want to get somebody <laughs> off your trail, <laughs> you ought to just start calling <laughs> on the name of Jesus. Right. <laughs> and when you call on the name of Jesus, <laughs> things begin to happen. Yeah. Whenever you pray <laughs> and ask God for anything, <laughs> you ought to ask it <laughs> in Jesus' name. <laughs> and the reason you ask it in Jesus' name <laughs> is because God's way <laughs> is always perfect. <laughs> but what God says is, <laughs> if you don't ask it <laughs> in Jesus' name, <laughs> I don't hear nothing <laughs> that you're talking about. <laughs> but the moment <laughs> that you ask it in my darling son's name, yeah. I will, <laughs> I'll move heaven. <laughs> yeah. you ask in my son's name. I'll dispatch some angels on your behalf. But if you ask it in my son's name, you don't hear me in New York. If you ask it in my loving son's name, you will move all of heaven. Because that's God's way. John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His son turned around and gave his life that you and I might have a right to the tree of life. And then you know what? After that, his son turned around and said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless, yeah. but I'm going to send you somebody to run along beside you. I'll send you a comforter. And when the comforter has come, he will make all things plain. Yeah. Are yeah. you kidding me? So there's no reason, no reason to doubt God. We got a whole lot of folks doubting God. Huh? Young folks go to school, and somebody tells them that they're great. Huh? Oh, yeah, that's what the professor's telling you. Oh, you're you going to move the world. Not without God. <laughs> yeah. And so they pop out of school, all of a sudden, they quit church. I'm not preaching yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you send them off to school. They go to school. Uh, when they come back home, they top heavy. Mm -hmm. They top heavy. You can't tell them nothing. They know everything. You ask them a question, they can't. They, something they ain't gonna tell you because they're just so smart. Mm -hmm. You know. You ask them, well, what, what button do you put? You know, I'm slow. What button do you push to, to turn the computer on? Let's move out of the way. I turn it on. <laughs> yeah. They're so top heavy. Yeah. Huh? That's because they've been sold a bad bill of goods. The prof your professor that you love so much, he don't believe in God. Mm. So what he did was he, he what he did was he indoctrinated you with what he believes, and you thought you had to have it so that you could graduate. <laughs> Hello, mm. the door is open. God's ways are always perfect. Yeah. I don't care what happens. I don't care how many clouds are circling in the sky. His His way is always perfect. Amen. Amen. I don't care how much trouble you get in. His way is always perfect. Yeah. I hear Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can go to the Father but by me. Would you stand to your feet as the choir sings? No 